Hello, everybody. I have a confession to make. I'm a full-fledged dice goblin. And when we made the switch from maps and minis to Foundry VTT, I basically said, wow, look at all this great functionality. I can't wait to completely ignore it because the clicky clacks make my brain produce the good chemical. Well, I've kept track for the last few months, and I average a little over four natural ones per session. And every time, my husband says, you should just roll in Foundry. Your dice are probably weighted wrong. So if you have the same voice in the back of your head as me that's saying, yeah, but like, how can it be more random than a physical die? I'm here to tell you that those cute hunks of plastic are, in all likelihood, less truly random than the random number generator, or RNG, used within Foundry. And although it pains me to admit, here's why. For randomization of dice rolls, Foundry uses what's called a Mersenne Twister pseudo-random number generator. Firstly, it's a pseudo-random number generator because it uses an algorithm to generate the numbers, whereas true RNGs use unpredictable physical occurrences in the natural world, like atmospheric noise. The idea is that true RNGs are more random because there is no human interaction in the generation of the number, whereas pseudo-RNGs are inherently influenced by the algorithm they're based on. However, true random number generators are generally much more expensive to design and slower to use. Because of this, pseudo-RNGs are basically the go-to for most uses you might be familiar with them in, like in video games. The Mersenne Twister that Foundry uses specifically is the most widely used PRNG. It's how Excel handles random number generation, along with programming languages like PHP, Python, R, and Ruby, and for my stats people, SAS, Stata, and SPSS. It's been around for about 24 years now and was specifically designed to fix a lot of the problems that previous PRNGs had. So basically, as far as these things go, it has a good resume. So how does a PRNG actually work? Here's the fun part where I get to start talking about Minecraft. If you're generating a new world in Minecraft, you can set a seed. More or less, whenever you put in that seed, you get the same world. Some seeds are great with tons of resources and others are barren wastelands, but it's the same world each time. PRNGs work a bit like this. They generate a seed to tell it a starting point. Then they randomly generate the next seed for the next random generation off that previous one and so on. That seed pretty much tells the PRNG where to start its random string of numbers. This is part of what makes it pseudo-random, the fact that eventually your randomly generated seed could repeat. But the extremely low frequency of this repetition is what makes the Mersenne Twister a good PRNG. It has a period of 2 to the 19,937th power, minus 1, which basically means you can run it an absurdly huge amount of times without getting the same sequence repeating. The Mersenne Twister also has passed numerous statistical batteries to demonstrate its randomness. Now, any RNG is going to have flaws, the Mersenne Twister included. But the real question here is, is it random enough to achieve functionally truly random dice rolls? Here's the short version. Yeah, definitely. But for all us digital dice skeptics out there, I went ahead, rolled thousands of dice in Foundry, and used the results to calculate a few simple statistics. The main one I'm using is called a chi-square test. This basically asks, hey, are any of these things occurring with a different frequency than expected? So let's start with a d20. First, I used Foundry to roll a d20 10,000 times. So 20 results, 10,000 rolls. That means that each roll should occur 5% of the time for about 500 times, right? And they pretty much did. 16 out of 20 results were rolled within 5% of 500 times. We won't get into interpreting p-values here and all that, but suffice to say for all 20 possible rolls, no frequency varied from that expected 500 times anywhere near enough to be considered statistically significant. I did try this a few times to test different seeds, and I'm actually using the results with the most outliers here, but all were pretty similar and none had significant differences between the frequencies. Just to make absolutely sure, I went ahead and rolled 10,000 D6 as well. Each number has about a 16.7% chance of being rolled, and you can see the percents here. Two of them are actually right on the money at about 16.7%, with the rest in line nearby and no statistically significant variations between the frequencies. 
I tested 10,000 D4 as well, and you guessed it, no significant differences there either. Now, yeah, I saw some variations from a true 5% result of each roll on my D20s and so on. But that's basically because of something called the law of large numbers, and the fact that I only rolled 10,000 times. If I had Foundry roll 100,000 or a million times, then chances are the more times I rolled, the more it would average out towards that 5% over time. This is also why, even though I play a halfling and can re-roll natural ones, and that I have several times re-rolled a one as another one, it isn't ultimately reflective of the randomization abilities of the Merce and Twister, so much as it's reflective of me probably just being cursed. In fact, in the massive scale of a PRNG, it's relatively common to have runs of the same number, because when you're dealing with strings of randomly generated numbers this size, yeah, sometimes you'll roll a bunch of the same thing in a row, just like with real dice, but over a million rolls, it all evens out. So if you're trying to make sure you're truly leaving your fate up to the dice gods as much as possible, then an RNG is going to be the way to go. Foundry VTT in particular uses a PRNG called a Mersenne Twister that has been widely used for over 20 years simply because it's effective at what it does. Recently someone recommended that I burn a bunch of sage over my dice, but it would seem I'm probably better off just switching to digital rolling. I hope this answered questions you didn't know you had about random number generation and that you don't hold my deeply simplified explanations against me here. See you in the next one.